top tips, now it's top mistakes. These are in order. So listen through from first to the last when you're watching this video, just like the last one. So you absorb everything and then you can go back and be specific. There's no PDF, just watch the video. I have timestamps in the top comment. All right, let's get into it. I've mixed probably since the last 10 tips video, a dozen of you guys personal mixes so here's a couple things that i want to give for those people if you're ever going to be mixed by me and be a better uh producer and engineer overall and things later on that i just need to follow as 10 mistakes for for doing this kind of stuff and the first one is setting your proper mic game so when you're recording in this little chart will help uh don't go all the way to the max where your waveforms are cutting off and it's clipping and don't go so, so low that you're so close to the noise floor. I just did my noise video and if you saw that, you know that it's almost impossible to fix the noise once it's really low like that. And clipping is also notoriously impossible to fix if it's that loud. It's a very, very key thing that we need to get early on. That's right. If we have that right, everything else will sound good in the second mistake that I see uh, for when I get vocals to mix is just not setting proper levels with the entire mix overall. Like the vocals might be fine, but just setting the instruments right, the kick snares and basses and background instruments, everything. Nobody puts enough emphasis on a volume mix, I don't think. Everyone uh, wants to pay attention to what effects I should put on here and what reverbs or whatever I should put on. And I do that so much too. And we undervalue how much getting the exact right volume, like really being intricate with it for every instrument goes uh, for making a good mix. So set proper levels, mic gain, and levels for your entire beat. And the next two have to do also with vocal performance. Half of the clients that I have go uh, just for vocal performances and they already have like a beat from YouTube or something like that. So with any vocals, these two are the main things. And there's some hard truths in here, too, that we're going to have to follow. But the first one is rhythm. Turn the metronome on. That's the biggest thing that I could do to help with rhythm. I just transferred a file, if you heard. But the rhythm of everybody's beat is super, super important. A big, big part about sounding professional. Like, every professional song that you hear is going to be dead on the beat unless you're blue face. Trust me. And it's like, that's his style kind of thing. Like, you can't be Lil Tecca or blue face all the time. And having a proper, like, locked on rhythm is super, super professional. And I spent two hours with one client literally just making sure that his flow was what he wanted in his head uh, because it was so offbeat. And the second one of these two is the hardest truth here timbre is your tone of voice the the you know indescribable quality that your voice has that isn't like how your rhythm is or what your pitch is at it's the quality of your voice here's why it's a hard truth it's a lot of white rappers trying to sound like black rappers <laughs> and it just doesn't come across as well even though you have a great idea for how flow goes in your head and it is there are great ideas that i'm getting it's just not your voice and you're trying to do things with your consonants and your syllables and your vowels that don't go toward your voice find inspiration from people who happen to be your skin color that is usually a good thing that's usually just how accents work if you're dealing with the most typical cases so in general try to just hear the timbre of your voice back and if it won't sound good to like a judgmental girl in front of you, then don't put it in your song. It's a weird rule that I heard a while ago, but it's like, yeah, make sure that you have like that, you know, creamy, sexy quality about your voice. If you're going for something like a main vocal and you're, you're mainly rapping in it and you're, you're shining in the production. It's the whole part about the production is making the vocal shine. If that isn't good, the rest of the song won't be good. So get your timbre right and get the rhythm right huge huge mistakes that i see that can be that can be fixed uh, with some work and the last couple these are all just things that i need to personally remember when i'm mixing like i need to not listen at high volumes and at low volumes um it, it, not at certain points and what i mean is basically listen high at certain points and listen low at certain points here's the rule for for these two listen at a high volume, turn your speakers up when you're doing detailed work. And then listen at a low volume, 
set your speakers very, very quiet, turn the volume down when you're doing general mixing things. Check your mix at a low volume as a whole often. Okay, so here's why those two are important. Low volume mixing, I got from so many high-end mixers. If you can make your song hit at a low volume, you got a good mix. You'll notice that every single song that you like could be heard at that low volume and still hit and still feel what the, the snare and the, the vocal, especially you hear the vocal, you hear like everything about the vibe of what the track is at a low volume. Super, super cool stress test for your mix. If you could get past that, it'll sound good at a high volume. Mixing at a high volume when you're doing like intricate vocal work is where I do that all the time. Like I'll just crank my speakers really loud so I could hear every single part of the vocal that's annoying me, mainly EQ stuff. So if you want to really get detailed with some of your instruments, don't do it all the time, but crank your speakers up for a momentary period. Don't blow your ears out. I'm not condoning any of that, but listen so you get that detail. Don't be afraid to go up and down. You see my posture. If anybody will tell you <laughs> who has seen me mix and work on stuff in this studio live, I have this posture right here. I have my hand on my dial of my focus right interface, and I'm always turning the master volume of my speakers up and down while I'm mixing with the other hand. It's always something that I'm constantly changing back and forth with. Next two, listening in different environments. And by that, I mean listen in different speakers. A lot of people make the mistake of only listening to their songs on the speaker or the computer mic or the headphones that they're using. And if you do that, you don't know how your mix actually sounds. Because unless they're like a huge setup where you have every frequency represented equally and you know those speakers well and how they translate, which almost none of us do, then you, you're not going to know how it hits in the car, especially the car, like a, a car and on phone speakers. Testing on a car and phone speakers will take care of almost everything that you can. If you could get access to a car, that's great. And everybody has a phone. Okay. Almost every single beat that I get when I get clients, uh, the bass is crazy high because we can't hear those in typical cheesy speakers like computer or phone speakers or headphones. So make sure you could hear your bass. Make sure you reference and other things before you put your song out. Huge one, okay? Listening uh, breaks, taking frequent breaks. I got this from Warren Hunt. It's a super, super important tip. So here's here's kind of a graph that shows, It's a, I know it's a simple graph, but whatever. Um, as soon as you start, you instantly start to like depreciate in how good you are at mixing. Your ear starts to get fatigued from the moment that you start mixing. So by taking frequent breaks, what you're doing is only existing while you're a good mixer. Only making decisions while you're a good mixer is what you get when you take frequent breaks. I get more done in a two hour time frame if I only mix for 30 minutes taking breaks in between than if I were to mix for that entire two hour stretch. Because if I were to mix for that entire two hour stretch and not take breaks, then I would have a bunch of decisions that I'd go back on. I wouldn't know what the vibe of the track would be. I would set into my ears a little bit more and I wouldn't make good decisions. Taking frequent breaks so, so accelerates how, it, it, and it feels weird. It feels like it's too much breaks. <laughs> like it feels like you shouldn't be, it feels like you should be working. You should just like focus on it for hours and stuff. And while you can, when you maybe get progressed a little bit, make sure that taking frequent breaks really, really is part of your framework. If you can't get something to hit, a break almost always solves it for me. Too much in solo. Does anybody know what solo is? If you don't know what solo is, it's the only listening to one instrument at one time. Listening too much in solo sucks because nobody only hears your song in solo, right? We'll listen in solo sometimes because we want to hear the details of one instrument and we want to know what this instrument is doing so we could have the effects on whatever instrument this is. But if we listen to it too much, it'll distract us from how all the elements are working together, which happens more frequently than we'd think. And I fall for this one all the time. No listener hears your song in solo. Think about it. They exclusively only listen to your song every track at a time. So they're not going to know how much it hits in isolation. Frequently not doing things in solo. Having solo only be a temporary thing. Maybe when you're f doing that fine detail work in the vocal. Other than that, try not to go in solo as much as you are right now. Good mistake. Good little general tip. 
And the last one, I saved this for the last one because it's kind of the most vague, but it's also like the most important because it's it's basically like have perspective flat. Like it, it's have, it's be honest with yourself. I got a lot of things when I was mixing these people's records that I got over the past couple months. I love them all. And it's crazy that I, I got to do that for so many people. But I would see the tips that I would give in my videos sometimes go too far. And here's what I have to say. And I wish everybody could see this that ever contacts me or does anything in music wise. If you're getting tips offline, the tips don't always work for every single situation, even if they work a lot. So layering was a tip that I gave in my top 10 tips video. And there would be songs, multiple songs that I got that would have layers to them and layer instruments. It seemed like just to layer instruments and they layered it just because it seemed like they saw my video and they knew that they should layer. They weren't honest with themselves of, oh, should I actually layer? And does this layering sound good in my production? This is what I mean by be honest. Forget about me. You know, if, if I tell you something and you try that thing out and it doesn't work for you, it didn't work that time. And you have to throw away your darlings like that. You have to throw away if it doesn't sound good because it won't sound good then. And that's the hardest thing. It's something, again, that I always, always come down to. It's always a struggle for me. I used to, early on making music, make the best spreadsheet. It'll have this much contrast and the tonal section will be like this. And then I convinced myself that I had good music because I used all my tips but it wasn't good music. And then I try to convince other people and be sad <laughs> because it, it wasn't good. I convince other people that it was good, but it was, it was terrible. And I wasn't honest with myself. So if you have that, if you have one mistake, if you, if you are to fix one mistake from this entire thing, make it be honest with yourself. All right. Hope you guys like this video, like it below if you liked it. And, uh, thank you so much for, uh, just like watching the channel guys there's so many more people now there's like 800 people subscribed and it's crazy <laughs> it's a lot of people i was freaked out when there was 200 people because it's like oh my god there's 200 people that i can't talk to now but now it's four times that which is like crazy so thank you guys for watching i know it isn't like a huge youtube channel but it's like there's 800 people what's up <laughs> hey um by the way i got covid too uh so that's why i've been like weird on uploads <laughs> recently uh so i'm going through that right now but it's how it is man it's it, it's all good and uh if you want the mixes done by the way i think i put this in the beginning of the video instagram is down below i'll catch you guys in the next one that's it peace